Dan Totora here with Lawrence Moten, Syracuse basketball alum. And, and Lawrence, what does it feel like for you, first and foremost, to be standing back on this court and be in Syracuse, New York, where you are right now? Well, it's definitely a, a blessing and an honor to be back here. You know, um, well, well, my game definitely started as far as people really recognizing me. You know, Syracuse, I consider my second home, and I got a lot of love and respect for people here in this area. So um, I'm here. I come here a lot, but it's, this is my way of just – showing the people that I appreciate everything they've done for me, and this is my way of giving back and saying thank you. Giving back to the community, one thing that you're going to be doing on a Wednesday, June 26, is be out at the Syracuse Chiefs game. How did this all get started for you, and uh, what does it mean to you to get out to that game and, and give the fans that type of experience? Well, well, basically, you know, it's, it's definitely good to network with people. A lot of people were wondering what I was doing and where I've been. You know, I've been a school teacher for the past four years, physical education teacher, and, and I played professionally 11 years, you know, three in the NBA and eight overseas from Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Italy, Spain, France. So I've been a world traveler, but it's good to be back here in my Syracuse community and, and, and doing whatever I can to help the community grow and help the university grow. You know, that's my goal, you know, to stay close with our alumni. I understand that, you know, as a team, we're all, we're all one. Jersey ceremony coming up at some point this season for you. Once you see number 21 head up to the rafters, what's that moment going to be like for oh, you? Man, that's going to be a special moment. You know, it's going to be a, definitely an a, a honor and a blessing. But at the same time, you know, it'll be recognized that, you know, I, I did do well here. My four years here were great. You know, but it took a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication. You know, I want the youth to know that. You know, what you put in, you know, the game and the game of life, whatever you do, you be well at it and you work hard at it. And that's what I try to instill in the kids that I teach. You know, the hard work pays off. And then having my name in the rafter with guys like Derek Coleman and Billy Owens, you know, Dave Bing, Pearl, you know, who I consider like my big brothers and uncles, you know, it's an honor. What have they said to you about that moment that is to come? Have you gotten to talk with them about that? Yeah, I've talked to Pearl a couple times, you know, and, and, and he's saying it's a great thing, you know, um, he congratulated me, and like I said, it's just an honor to be, you know, within the likes of those guys' names, you know. But like I said, um, it took a lot of hard work and dedication. You know, a lot of people were wondering when it was going to happen, and, you know, I really didn't have an answer for them. But at the same time, I tell people it was going to eventually happen because I'm the all-time lead scorer in Big East history, so, and Syracuse. So it had to happen sometime. What does it mean to you to still have that record? I mean, Syracuse has since won a national championship. They've been back to the Final Four more than once. But to know that your name is still on top as far as scoring, what does that mean to you? Yeah, that's, that's a big honor because, you know, when I first got here, a lot of people didn't expect me to do some of the things that I did off at, from, from the jump start. You know, um, it, it shows, you know, you know, what I put in and, and, and the things that I did were, were, were great. You know, I didn't recognize it at the time, you know, that it was happening. You know, but my, my grandmother and my mother always just told me to keep a level head, you know, respect people and, and expect it in return and, and, and everything else will fall into place. Looking at your career, you know, people know that you went to the Grizzlies. They know that you spent time with the Bullets. But when you were overseas, what really happened with your game? How did you improve? J just go into those moments that people in America couldn't see. Yeah, well, you know, it's definitely a blessing being able to play all over the world. You know, of course, we all want to play in the NBA, and that's a dream. Uh, I was able to do that. But to get accustomed to seeing different cultures and seeing how different people live was also, was also an educational tool for myself. You know, um, I, I took it very well. I got a lot of friends from overseas, you know, mainly Spain, one of my favorite places that I played. But just to get to know the people and the different cultures, you know, gave me a better understanding of uh, not only just basketball, but life. And having that understanding, Coach Beheim obviously plays a part in that in, in your young career. What has Coach Beheim meant to you, not only back then, but right now? Well, Coach is a great man. You know, he's a great person. And, and a lot of people, you know, didn't give him the credit until he won a national championship of being a great coach. You know, he, he's, a, he's a very good coach, and he's a, and he's a very good motivator. You know, one of the things I can say about Coach Bay, you know, he will let you do what you do best. If you're a scorer, he wants you to score. If you're a defender, he wants you to defend. So, you know, he, he knew what buttons to press uh, to the right people, and, and he's been doing a very good job at that, you know, for all these years. You know, 20 victories every year is, is almost amazing, and, and he, he finds a way to do that. 
And I tell people all the time, you know, no matter what year, no matter what era, or even years to come, the train will never stop. Going back to the moment that you made the decision to come to Syracuse, what was that commitment like for you? Who came to visit you? Just yeah. just recall that time. Well, it, it was a big commitment. I was lucky to have uh, my high school roommate uh, and also my high school teammate, Marvin Graves, which was the quarterback on the football team. He was already here at the time. So we would stay in contact, and, you know, he would tell me, you know, they're very interested in you, and it's a great university, great, great town, and, and you just come up here and check it out. I got a chance to do that. You know, Billy Owens was my chaperone who's now the godfather of my daughters, you know, his wife and my wife were roommates. So, you know, everything seemed to work out for the best, and, and, and I thank that man every day. When you look back on those moments and, and what Syracuse has brought to you, is that one of the happiest times in your life when you signed that letter and said, this is where I'm coming? Yeah, it was, it was definitely a, a great moment for me, you know, um, coming here, you know, and, and, and seeing the good camaraderie of the people understanding that, you know, um, not only is it about winning, you know, I can honestly say Syracuse fans, I've been blessed to travel all over this world. And Syracuse fans, you know, uh, are treat wins more like religion. You know, <laughs> they're diehard fans. You know, if you do well, you know, they open their arms up to you. And if you treat people with respect and good character, um, they'll treat you the same way. So, like I said, I have a lot of great memories from this university. But not only the university, one of the things my mother always stressed you know, when I got here, she said, make sure you don't just stay up there on that university. You see what's going on in the town. And I got a chance to meet some great people in the community, you know, and, and, and I've been here and I consider Syracuse my second home. Being in the community, we talked a little bit about the fact that you're doing the event with the Chiefs. Also doing an event with me on, on that Tuesday, June 25th at Carvel DeWitt. Just go into, you know, what you want fans to know about that and what they can expect when they come out and see you. Well, you know, like I said, just, just expect that if you never met me, you know, you're going to meet a real person who's down to earth and, and just loves life. And, and I'm here to do whatever it takes to help the community and the university grow. You know, so I'm a major part of that. I'm going to be affiliated and always stay within the uh, Syracuse University community and the university. So this won't be the first or the last time you see me here. I have to ask you, do you miss the 2-3 zone at all? Well, you know, I I don't miss it. You know, we played a lot of man-to-man, -man too, when I was here at Syracuse. So, you know, it was it was a little bit of both. Beheim knew how to press the buttons and, and do it at the right time. But I, I've joked with people a lot, and I say he might have a, a contract just to play zone for, <laughs> for the whole game. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. <laughs> Absolutely, and and when you look at the team moving forward, you know I know you stay connected with the team and pay attention. Who's really a leader for you? You know, who are some of the guys that that you think really have shaped this university to stay strong and stay positive here? Well, you have different eras. You know, I'm very good friends with guys like Arenze Anuaku. You know, Paul Harris is a good friend of mine. You know, Eric Devendorf, Demetrius Nichols, and these are guys that play after me. You know, even to, to, to guys today, Deion Waiters and, uh, you know, C.J. Fairs, you know, those are guys that just follow the path on being, you know, successful, understanding, you know, when you step on that court and you put on that S, you have to represent, you know, and, and that's another thing I can say that I'm blessed. I, I, I'm blessed to know the guys on every level, you know, from, from George Hicker, who played with Coach Beheim, all the way from Pearl in the 80s to uh, uh, Roosevelt Bowie, you know, these are all people that I look up to and I consider my brothers. So we stay connected. That's why it's very important, too, that I let people know that, you know, we're, we're all here as a basketball alumni, you know, unity. And staying connected, this team that's moving forward now, how much do you know about the players that, that will be here, the, the, the class that they're bringing in, the five guys that they have, and then also the leadership of a C.J. Fair? Yeah, well, it's going to be big for C.J. to step it up you know, as far as a leader, and maybe, maybe more of a vocal leader now. You know, he's kind of like a quiet guy, but he lets his game do the talking. You know, but I, f I really feel like uh, my man, Janarian Grant, will be playing well. I really feel like Coleman is going to step it up this year. And, and the incoming freshmen will just have to play their role and fit in, get in where they fit in. You know, uh, it, it, Bayham's going to play you if you do what you got to do, plain and simple. And going to, you know, making making the uh, decision to go up to Canada and play a few games there against the universities, 
what is it like, and can you go into any experience that you had with the team to really bond before the season? You know, it's very important. It's very important. You get to know uh, the different attitudes and what you're dealing with as a team. You know, because like I said, you, um, you know, not only as a coach, but as a player, you're dealing with 12 to 15 different emotions. And everybody has, you know, their own way of thinking at times. But, you know, the earlier that you bond, uh, it'll be better and it'll help you at the end so you everybody will be on the same page. I think it'll help those guys get to know each other personally. And, and I think it's a good thing. I know we talked about it a little bit, but the Big East no longer being a, a home for Syracuse going to the ACC. Mm-hmm. What are your overall thoughts on that? Because to you, I know the Big East meant a lot. Yes, it, 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 it was definitely a downer at the time that I heard about it, you know, but... I tell people all the time, you know, we're definitely going to miss the rivalries with Georgetown and uh, Villanova and UConn, St. John's and Seton Hall and those type of teams. But, you know, sometimes change is good. You have to look at it as, as this is, at a situation like this. Can you imagine Duke and Syracuse in the Dome? Can you imagine North Carolina and Syracuse down in Chapel Hill? So, I mean, there was going to be times, you know, we're starting new rivalries. And we get to play teams that we used to play that were also in the Big East back in the days, like Boston College and Miami and Virginia Tech. So um, I really feel like economically it was done for a whole as the athletic program and mainly for the, maybe the football team. But uh, it's a good thing. It'll work, it'll work out better for all sports, not just basketball. Lastly, Lawrence, as far as a mission statement for you moving forward, what do you want to be? What do you want to be your legacy, not just with Syracuse, but with everything that you do? Yeah, well, um, one of the things I can say is as far as my legacy, my grandmother always said, all you have is uh, your, um, your character and how you treat people at the end of the day. And I just want people to understand that, you know, um, I respect you even if I don't know you, you know, and I, but I expect it in return. And, and just to treat people right and enjoy life. 